If you watch my video on getting started with software-defined radio using the RTL SDR dongle, you'll remember I mentioned we do a video on tracking aircraft using the RTL SDR. Well, this is it. Nowadays, aircraft broadcast quite a bit of data about themselves as they fly along. You may remember after a tragic aircraft loss, Boeing was able to tell investigators that the engines of the aircraft were running fine as they received reports directly from that aircraft system as the aircraft flew along. Anti-collision systems also broadcast information that provide pilots with avoidance inputs. In this case, we'll be looking at something called the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast Mode S Transponder. This system broadcasts important aircraft information to air traffic controllers. We'll be using our SDR dongle, a computer, an appropriate antenna, a data decoder program, and a web-provided mapping interface to see the aircraft flying within reach of our antenna. It's really pretty cool. First, we'll assume that you have your RTL SDR dongle and have used it with one of the software processors such as SDR Sharp. The next thing you'll need is an antenna that receives on the frequency used by the ADSB system. That frequency is 1090 megahertz. If you're a ham radio operator, you remember the formula to compute the length of a dipole antenna. To compute the length, you divide the number 468 by the frequency in megahertz. So in this case, we'll divide 468 by 1090 to get the length in feet. That is 0.429 feet. To convert that into inches, we'll multiply it by 12, resulting in 5.15 inches overall. Since we'll be using a dipole antenna, each leg will be 2.57 inches long. If you prefer to work in metric measures, multiply the 2.57 by 25.2 to get millimeters. In this case, 64.7 millimeters or 6.5 centimeters per dipole leg. The RTL SDR website has some examples of homemade antennas for this application. You can also take a short piece of coax with the proper SMA connector on one end and easily make a dipole for this frequency. Simply remove the outer and inner insulation and expose just over 6.5 centimeters of the conductor and the braid. Roll the braid back along the coax resulting in two legs of 6.5 centimeters and cover it all with some electrical tape. The easy way to get an appropriate antenna is to have purchased the RTL SDR dongle set that includes the antenna kit or to have purchased the antenna kit separately. Use the short antenna arms that come with the antenna kit and you're good to go. Now that we're able to receive the signals, we need to be able to decode the signals. For this demo, we're going to use a program described on the RTL SDR website. It's called Dump 1090. It's not a very glamorous name, but it does what's required. The other thing we'll need to do is install a second piece of software called a virtual radar server. This software calls Google Maps and then displays the information from the Dump 1090 program over the map. There are good installation instructions on the RTL SDR website, and I'll link to the ADSB tutorial page on that site in the description below this video. What we will do here is start from the installed state and give you a quick peek at what you'll be able to do when you have the tools installed on your computer. Now, before we jump in, I need to mention that these programs are free and supported by users. 
They've also been around a while. That means that, like the SDR Sharp software, you'll be installing these from bat files and may need to use the Zadig program to ensure you have the right RTL drivers loaded. The installation instructions cover this well. Just understand it's not the automated install processes newer commercial software uses. Now, before we leave, let me remind you that when installing from a bat file, install might not be exactly the right word. It's, it's more like running the software. Uh, the installation doesn't include a lot of links to the Windows registry. So the bat file just runs these various software um, so that you're able to use them. So let's get started. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is when you download the dump 1090 file, it's a zip file, so you'll want to extract it into a folder. And so I've done that into a dump 1090 folder in the My Documents section of my computer. And in this case, when I go about installing this, I'm simply going to double click on this dump 1090 bat file. It will execute a number of commands to install the dump 1090 um, program onto my computer. The other thing I did just for my own convenience is I created a dump 1090 bat shortcut that I can keep on my desktop so I can open it without uh, digging around in my directory in my Windows File Explorer uh, to get to the bat file to get uh, the dump 1090 running. The other piece of software that you'll need to do download is the virtual radar uh, set up and it's just a single executable. As you can see, it's not a very big file. Uh, and again, I put that, uh, moved it from my downloads file to uh, a file um, in, in a folder where I keep some ham radio related things. And so to start the virtual uh, radar setup, again, you just double click this and then I'll get that all installed. And again, I used a shortcut to put that on my um, computer's desktop to make it easy for me to get to it. So let's take a look at what those particular programs look like now. Okay, so here is the dump 1090 output. The program is running in a command window. It's the information that's coming from that little antenna on my bookshelf through the SDR dongle into the computer. Now this information is not particularly interesting or useful in this format to the typical user, uh, and to be able to see what this actually means, we need to put it into the virtual radar server, which uh, I've got running underneath this. So let's uh, add the map overlay, or in this case, underlay to this information and show you what it looks like. Now, when you open the virtual radar server application by uh, double clicking on that executable or on the shortcut uh, it, that you might have made, uh, you're going to see a couple of things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into Tools, and we're going to do a couple of setup things. So first, we're going to go to Options. We're going to go to Receivers up here near the top, and it's going to give us some information about our receiver. Now, to make this easy, they've got a wizard, so we're going to click the wizard, and it's going to ask us some important questions. So what do we want to connect to? Well, a software-defined radio. What decoder program are we using? We're doing dump 1090, so we've selected that. Is it running on this computer? Yes, it is. And then click Finish to make the changes or uh, if you're doing yours for an initial setup to get it ready to go. Now, I've already had this configured, so I'm going to cancel, but you would click Finish. So with this done, then we could press test the connection. A message comes up and says the connection can be made with these settings. So in other words, it's seeing the dump 1090 and it's seeing the SDR. And so next, then we can click on OK down here, get out of this particular option. Now, with that complete, you can see that the receiver is connected it's tracking 51 airplanes. It's collected 38,000 messages. Um, and some of this other information is available for you, the IP address of that virtual server and so forth. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, open our browser using this link right here to display that map information. 
So here we are with the information broadcast from the various aircraft through the Dump 1090 displayed on the map in the virtual radar server. Now this is set up near where I live and this is of course where the uh, signals are going to be coming from. Uh, when you start yours for the first time you're going to want to start up here in menu because it's likely that the map is not going to open up where you are. So start with menu. We're going to go to options. We're going to go to general and then you're going to click on set the current location and that will uh, redisplay the map with a little uh, typical map pin icon and you can either uh, put in your GPS uh, location or you can drag the map underneath the, the pin and uh, specify where you are that way and so that then you will have have set the location of where you are. Now after you've made that change you're going to come back here and uncheck the set current location so that the software knows to uh, begin the map process at this location next time. Now there are a couple of other things here and that includes um, the various units uh, that of things that you're going to want to use. So I've got nautical miles and height and feet and speed and knots, um, barometric pressure and inches of mercury and so forth. Typical measures for the United States. Where you live it may be different. When we go up to map we're going to make some changes here too or at least review what's selected and so um, I want to auto select the closest um, aircraft on the altitude. I can make changes based on distance if I prefer. I can set the distance in our um, range circles in the map display and the number of circles that's right here and some colors and that kind of thing. When I come to aircraft this is another important um, item for me to set and that on my aircraft I can set three label lines and so I've got it set for the call sign in the first one, the altitude in the second, and the registration in the third. So if you can look down here you can see this is an American Airlines flight 1702. It's at 6,900 feet so it's probably coming into Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport and the tail number is November 750 Uniform Whiskey. So that's the information about that airplane. Up here is a private airplane and the call sign and the registration are essentially the same. He's at 7,700 feet um, and he's probably just out, out maneuvering, uh, enjoying a nice afternoon. There are a lot of things that you can choose from and so you can play around with these in the options menu and then in the map or the aircraft tab to give you a display that shows you the things that you are interested in. So we'll leave the options right now. And here then we can see that we have the um, display. We can use our scroll wheel on our mouse to go in or out. And then we can just drag the map to the left or right using the mouse button. Pretty much the same way as you would use with Google Maps. Now at this point we're about from where I am where my antenna is down to Phoenix Sky Harbor. It's about 25 miles. And so you can see I've got some pretty good range from this just little tiny antenna here on my bookshelf. Here is uh, an airplane that just dropped out. He was um, out there, you know, around uh, 50 miles. This little airplane is uh, out there. And if I click on him, I can see what he's been doing. So he's just been doing circles and so forth. Uh, his information comes up over here, so it's a private airplane. It's a 70, uh, 172 Skyhawk. He's at 8,500 feet, his vertical speed, and all that other information is shown uh, for him right there. So on this airplane, we've got, we can click on him, and it's a United Airlines Flight 2071. He's at flight level 380. His tail number is November 38. 727. We clicked on him and we get this information over here. So we got a picture of that kind of airplane. Uh, he's at 38,000 feet, flight level 380. Uh, he took off from um, 
uh, Houston Intercontinental Airport, and he is going to uh, San Jose. So there's a lot of information available to you uh, as you look at these. This little this little airplane here is a private airplane. His tail number is November two one three four Mike. He's at 4,500 feet. Uh, he hasn't doesn't have a flight plan uh, filed. You would expect that uh, right there because uh, this is a very busy general aviation airport where they do a lot of uh, maneuvering practice, touch and goes, and that kind of thing. Um, and he might be part of one of the flight schools that are located there. So this is the um, virtual radar uh, display. You can see that uh, we can get some pretty good range even out of a little antenna. Uh, and you can have a chance to zoom in on and learn about the airplanes that are coming in and out of the area where you happen to find yourself. So as you've seen, tracking aircraft near you is pretty cool. And the Dump 1090 program does a good job of feeding raw data to the virtual radar server to provide you with the display. You also saw that the virtual radar server gives you some options to modify your display, including what aircraft information you want to display. Now, before you tell me that there are smartphone apps that do the same thing, yeah, I know. In fact, I use one when waiting in an airport parking lot for someone to arrive or even in the backyard to just check on who's flying over. Using the RTL SDR receiver and this software is not only to see the data on the nearby planes, but also to gain some understanding of another aspect of software-defined radio. In my mind, apps are about the destination and hobbies are about the journey. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.